Well, welcome to our first on the road video with Whole Worker. I'm Paul Pichot. If you're a subscriber to this channel, then you know what we're all about. We're all about our work and especially encore careers, people who want to change their career after their career, do something that maybe is more passionate driven. So we're making our way across the US because Whole Worker is moving from East Coast to West Coast. And I had the blinker on the whole time. <laughs> so we're on the road right now. Uh, and we're here with our special guest, Mrs. P, Ellen Pichot, <laughs> is with us today. And we're going to talk about the nature of our work, how we feel about work, all the discussions that we typically have on the YouTube channel here. So uh, welcome, Mrs. P. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely to be here. So the, so the question we're going to deal with today is, what is your work? How do you define it? Those sorts of things. So tell everybody what you do and uh, what is your work? I am a teacher, um, primarily in elementary school, currently in elementary school teaching, although because I'm moving from New Jersey to California, I will have a new job, I hope. Um, so I have been working as a teacher in both certified and non-certified uh, positions for more than 25 years, I'd say. Yep, and, I'd say that. Yeah. And um, I love it. I love my work so much. I, I love working with children. I love teaching children. I love seeing children's creativity and enthusiasm. And I am very grateful to be be doing this and being given the responsibility for helping children develop into good people, I would say. And you should mention to everyone that it's not just your 25 years in the institution of schools, but you also have some prior experience to that too. Right. Right. So I, um, originally I suppose my first teaching work was um, as a Sunday school teacher, which should never be minimized because it's a lot of work also. Uh, then I went into subbing in public schools and then I started homeschooling our three children and I homeschooled for 19 years. Watch out, on 19 head. years. And uh, that was pretty, that was... That's a different kind of teaching experience. Yeah, that yeah. was our life. That was really that our, was our life. life. <laughs> um, and during that homeschooling time, I not only taught our kids, but for several years I worked in a homeschool co-op and taught um, both elementary and high school classes. So after that, I subbed again for a few years and then I was given the opportunity to work in a small private school, a French American school. And I taught second grade and I did ESL teaching, even though I didn't have certification for that. I could speak some French and help the French students coming in to learn English. Um, I taught third grade two years and um, yeah, I had a wide variety of experiences in that school for four years and then a little break and then another year. So five years there. I also taught for two years in, a, um, in an urban setting in Patterson, New Jersey, a very large district, about 29,000 students. And I taught uh, long term in sub positions. So I taught second, third, and fourth grade there too, yeah. and uh, that was that was an eye-opening experience. Um, just being in a very, very, very large uh, district with administration that you know, on in some cases was very helpful. In other cases, it was very difficult to deal with all of the administration. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's be diplomatic. Here. Yes, I will be diplomatic. <laughs> All right. So so that's sort of the typical resume fashion, what your career has been. Now we want to get to what we like to talk about here on Whole Worker, which is the essence of our work, getting to work we really love. And you said you love teaching. Yeah. But obviously you know that that word means something different to you than it means to other people, especially parents in particular. Mm -hmm. It means this certain box. Right. If you get out of that box right. of the label of teacher, how would you define your work, Ellen Pichot's work? What is it that you do? What is it that grabs you? What is it that you really love? 
I really love um, helping children understand that they can learn anything, that they can be their own best motivators, that if they're interested in something that they should pursue it and they can pursue it because they've learned how to read, they've learned how to research, they've learned how to follow their passion. I mean, things that you talk about a lot. Right, right. I think that kids have that very young. And then, as you used the word before, the institution, the institution kind of beats it out of them and they just, they just lose that native enthusiasm yeah, for learning. that passion for learning. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, think about babies. They just are continually yeah. exploring, absorbing, and learning, and growing. And that lasts for a couple of years in the school system, um, but it doesn't last forever. And we all know, you know, there's those kids that just either drop out or cop out or opt out or... Yeah. Right. you know, check out, and um, unfortunately that's more kids than it isn't, so I'm trying to be a teacher that um, conveys what I love, which is both learning and learning how to learn and how to become more, I'd say, versed in, in certain areas, you know, just being able to learn something and to know what you're talking about. I'm going to push push my point and my question or the point within my question a little deeper and ask if you could not use the word teacher because again <clears throat> that's yeah, a box that, right, right? That, that sends a very it's like in my clear. in my pastoral experience from my previous life if I want to use that term you know I don't like to use the word pastor because people have a box as to what that means and much of the stuff that I did in pastoral ministry is not what they're thinking. Yeah. Because we were we were we started new churches, so it was very entrepreneurial. Um, and there's a whole bunch of mechanics and literally business with that that comes along with that. So anyway, if you if you wanted to get away from the box of the label teacher, how would you describe it? How would you label yourself in terms of just you? Just Ellen, what, I mean, it might not fit another teacher, but it fits you. How would you label yourself? Well, it's in, that's a good question because, as you said, you know, being a teacher just comes laden with preconceptions and yeah. stereotypes and everything else. So, in thinking about that, to be honest with you, I would say I'm someone. I'm a I'm a lover. A lover. <laughs> yeah. A lover of a lover. the kids? I love the kids. Yeah. I love right. learning. I love, yeah, I both, love imparting both parts knowledge. Of the equation. Yeah, yeah. I love watching their brains spark, you know, and <laughs> turn on. And if I can't say I'm a teacher, I would I guess I'd say I'm I'm a lover and I want I want these guys to develop their yeah. own ability to Cer love. Yeah, certainly I can attest to your being a lover of learning. Because you yourself love to learn. Yeah, I am. And then, of course, I can, I can attest to the, everything you're saying. You're yeah. also a lover of the kids themselves. Yeah. And the kids love her, by the way. Uh, <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> um, had some good feedback. <laughs> yeah, some good feedback. Uh, that's Well, that's cool. Because yeah. that get, gets to the essence of what we talk well, about a lot yeah, in Whole talking, Worker. Yeah, you're yeah. talking about being passionate what do you, about what something. What do you really love to do? Yeah, what do you love to do? I, 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 yeah, I, I find this. that people, when they're looking into an encore career, you know, again, that's the career after your career. Right. Uh, you know, so there's usually something that their career didn't scratch and they're they're looking to do that thing. Yeah. And it could be something as, as simple and as common as wanting to write a book, you know, about yeah. their experience or something that they always wanted to write a book about. And they can't get around to it in their career, mm -hmm. but post their career, they can. When they get into their 50s and they start thinking, well, you know, there's more years behind than there are in front, there's still a work I want to do, yeah. uh, whether it's writing a book or very often with professionals it's consulting you know yeah. how do I take my knowledge my experience my wisdom yeah. which is really the word and get that to other people in my industry yeah uh, you know before I fade out completely 
to put it euphemistically. Yeah. Um, so I kind of feel like I would. <laughs> I feel like I'll probably be teaching until there's you know no no more um, energy left in me. No energy left. But yeah. you know, actually, when you say when you say that, I feel a little bit like I would. Um, I would like to start a school. You know. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I will do that. This is news to me. Yeah. I don't think I will do that. However, that's a lot of work. That's kind of like what I feel like. I feel like I've had so yeah. much poured into me, yeah. and you can only give so much in your in your in the scope of your of your particular job. Right. So, you know, yeah. it would kind of be cool to yeah. to do it a little bit more broadly. And we've we've t- I I, understand, I I get what you're saying because we've talked about that over the years of your career that you, you, it was like a progressive revelation. You began to see how much struct, the structure, the administration, the institution influenced how our t- kids get taught. And, and yeah. you and I have had conversations about, well, the way to affect the larger picture is by getting involved in the structure, the institution, yes. the administration. And even teaching teachers how teaching to teach. Teaching teachers, yeah. How you to know, teach. How, yeah. Uh, you know, I... I, I I'm not qualified to do that, but it would be cool if I could, you know, to, right. to you know, just kind of warn. Or oh, writing a book? Yeah, I suppose I could do that. For teachers. Yeah, that would... compulsory reading. Yeah, and then try to make it compulsory reading. Yeah. 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 yeah that, every, that... every author's dream. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean. Cool. So, okay, guys, let's, let's talk a little deeper here or a little further down the, the argument line. How, you know, a lot of what we talk about these days, on, certainly talk about on Whole Worker and these days in the professional world is how much of your, our identities do we get from our work? And it's my contention that we, we get a large portion of our identity from our work. What's the first question that people ask you when you go to a party? What do you do? Yeah, what do you we do? We want to know. What do you, because what do you a do? lot of that defines us for good or for bad. Now, I know there's, I know there's uh, you know, a cadre of people who think, yeah, but you, we shouldn't be getting our identity from our work at all. All right. I, I understand the sentiment there, but it's just not, I don't think it's true. We get a large, even if you're, you know, doing something that you don't like, we still get a, a chunk of our identity from from our work. So the so the question is uh, for you, Mrs. P, is how much of your identity do you feel you get from your work as a teacher? That's a good question. Um, I think I think because of what you asked before about you know if you uh-huh. could call it something else. Oh, right, right. And right. I said, lover. I think of myself as a lover. Then I would say I get a pretty large amount of my identity yeah. from my work because yeah, yeah. that's who I want to be as a person is right. um, you know a loving person and yeah I, I think that's the totally I mean, appropriate way to answer that's, that's that's why that's why I think we got to get away from those boxes or those labels yeah. yeah I agree with everybody who thinks those labels are boxes I agree with you so let's get away from the boxes what's the essence of your work yeah you know. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's almost the reverse. I'm I'm a, I'm a trainer. Right. I train people in in behavioral skills. But what I mean by the reverse is the essence is a teaching thing. I I, I love to teach. I love to get knowledge out of my head and into the heads of other other yeah. people. Um, yeah. Well, I would. I guess I would say that a pretty good part of my identity is is in what I do. Right. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I'm very happy about what I do, and I think it's an important job, and I think it's, you know, some way to be influential in this world, and, um, you know, that's a good thing. Right. As long as it's a positive influence, you know, yeah, that's a good right, thing. Right, right, right. And fortunately, you know, working with young children, you can have a lot of influence, you yeah. know. You can have a... For me, even, you know, my third grade teacher... And my mother, who was a teacher, as you know, mm-hmm. yep. were really, you know, very important to me. And I think I just always thought I'd grow up and be a teacher. That's and, interesting. Yeah. The and influence I, of parents. Right. There. And even though I didn't do it, I didn't get my certification till I was in my 50s. Mm-hmm. And 
I didn't get my advanced degrees till I was in my, oh, I'm going to say I was in my 60s. Just a little <laughs> bit farther down the road. You almost had an encore career. I almost had an encore career because yep. I finally got, you know, master's degree and everything else. Right, right. But at any rate, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, that was, that was an early identity. It was a, something that I recognized that... I wanted to do and you know a lot of because the way I was raised I was responsible for my siblings in a lot of ways um, you know there was really a it was really an overseer type mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. there that translates well into tra into teaching cool. because you do want to cool. help kids do their best so. cool. well I think that's a great foundation for our, our videos ahead while we're on the road here we're gonna be on the road for Quite a while. Quite a while. At least three weeks. We're traveling uh, as we go from east to west. We're visiting friends, family. I'm doing a little fly fishing along the way. Uh, and um, so we'll probably do, you know, at least three videos while we're on the road here. So if you're new to Whole Worker and you like what you're hearing, give us a like right now for this video. And then now's a good time to subscribe. And when you subscribe, Hit that subscribe button and then right next to it there's a little bell ring that bell and you'll get notification every time i post a new video uh, in addition and in closing there is uh, a couple videos that i think you might find very interesting one is finding meaningful work that's a really important one a lot of people found a lot of help in that video the other is a series of videos i call encore career 101 it's a series of three videos that will sort of give you a mini course on Encore Careers and what that's all about if you're 50 plus and thinking you want to break that corporate thing before you retire or even as you come into your retirement years and um, you know start something different maybe something entrepreneurial something with a little bit more autonomy and flexibility then watch those videos as well all right I'm Paul Pichot Ellen Pichot this is Ellen Pichot and we'll see you down the road okay bye-bye